The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman here on this Friday, the 31st of April. One more week to go of April. We'll see what happens with those monthly charts. I've got a, I've got a chart right here of City Citibank, uh, City Group. They call it now, yes, yeah, City Group. So there was this um, island reversal right at the low of 42.01 on the 24th of March. It's had a very nice rally, it went above the 200 period moving average and then below. And that 200 period moving average before was just a critical support level and then it became a resistance. So I'm going to be doing a webinar coming up fairly soon. And I'm going to be discussing these things because what I do for subscribers, and it's the reason why I have about an hour long overview every weekend, uh, a video that I send out. Uh, going through all these different uh, techniques and these different aspects of the stocks and the positions that we have and why and what we're looking at. And I find that I, more and more people over the, the years, now decades, um, that I've been with TFNN and also previous to that, um, I, I started to use a lot of the Chapman Wave methodology and I get questions about it. So I'm going to deal with those questions, but I will also be looking at why over the last I'd say kind of maybe six six weeks to eight weeks, even with the bank crisis, I've been looking more and more positively at the broader market. And I believe that the money that's been put to um, safekeeping CDs or whatever it is in fixed income will eventually get back into the market. And that's going to make for a huge move to the upside. How we deal with this current fluctuation in prices is going to be something else, but I'll talk about that in a moment. Now, the reason why I have C, which is Citigroup right here, I have JP Morgan. I'll go to all the different indices in a moment. Uh, I just did it in the uh, in the market, um, the 10 o'clock market overview uh, for listeners, but I'll do it again. So we've gotten to a peak D in the JP Morgan with an island reversal of the low in the 120s and now it's trading 139. A very nice action. The weekly chart looks great until you look at the, the month and you say, oh, my, that's a long way down from 172 to 101 and then back to 139. But I have to tell you, the more I look at it, these the financials, Bank of America, the more that, that's one of the weaker ones. But actually, it's one of the weaker ones. But it has the most potential if everything comes right. We don't have it. This is the first period in in years that we haven't had it. Um, I might consider it for subscribers. I don't know just yet. I'll have to do some work over the weekend. But most importantly, if I'm looking at the XLF, and I always consider this to be a very important part of our economic vernacular, you've got to be looking at the financials if you want strength in the general market to be sustained invariably you want to see at least a couple of the bank stocks, the very important financials. I can even include BRK.B. I wonder if I've lost all the notation. I've been notating this for 30, 40 years. Oh, man. Oh, I've got Oh, yeah, it's got it. Okay. So peak A, peak B, peak C. We're at peak C right now, and it's still holding pretty well. Don't forget, Berkshire Hathaway is in the uh, financial ETF, the XLF, but actually... This is the economy because um, Bu Buffett is in everything. I mean, he's in insurance. He's in um, oil. He's in, I mean, you just name it. He's insurance. He's there. So I, and not only that, he's there. A lot of it is paper, but a tremendous amount, unlike many other people, big, big, the, the big, the big people in this, in, in the financial world, he owns companies. He has to have his managers Making profits, he has to, he he is he is part of the organization. He doesn't just have the paper, uh, even Oxy. So uh, Occidental. Let me just look at Oxy chart. So the reason why I like to see the financials moving, and Berkshire Hathaway was telling us it's in this upper rectangle, up in the higher range, 
Um, and Oxy is holding very nicely, also just digesting huge gains. It's just going to be okay, be again. And I want to be all over. This is Technical Friday, so I want to do things on a purely technical level today. Berkshire Hathaway, if this is the economy, then what are we talking about a crash? There is no crash in this stock. Um, a 360 down to, say, 260, now back to 322. It's just working its way higher. At peak B, you can get the dreaded H pattern. I'll show you a chart of the dreaded H in a minute. Um, yes, that can happen. But look at the way the technicals are starting to improve. The weekly bank D cross positive against the Castic still lagging, but at 69%. Flat um, uh, daily charts, the Castic at 91%. Um, the monthly chart still has to see the MACD cross positive. It's still negative. But the nine is the nine is sitting over the 14, just as the daily daily Dow is sitting over. I, the more I look at this, and the more I can just, if it's possible, just to to compartmentalize, separate myself from things that I read. And you know, I try to do that all the time. It's the reason why I, I either trade or I practice all the time in the one minute, the two minute, the 10 minute. Remember, I just said to the den, 41.38 should be the next support. And what do we hit today in the E-mini right here? 41.37.75. So now it's at a leg B. I, I have to tell you, this is not, the bear market would have said from my peak D in the Dow that we would go down Really sharp. Well, what is this? Oh, it's the one minute. <laughs> I was going to say, that's not the chart. Uh, ESM23. Let me just get that back again. Yeah, this is a nice move to leg B. And there's this midpoint that we had looked at 41.50. Start to trade in the 41.55s. And some money will come back into the market. So what we're looking at here is within the context of everything I'm looking at. And look at these tiny little, this is called falling, a very miniature falling axe formation, which is extremely positive. You go like that right there, whoops, and you go like that, whoops, and what do we have? You go like that right there, whoops, and another one like that, whoops, and what do we have? We have the pattern that I always look at for a break to the upside very quickly. So I don't know if Berkshire Hathaway can do it. This is already the third session, but by uh, Monday, my, by Tuesday, it needs to be tackling the high of 325.72 to continue this move. But once you get to C, leg C and then peak C in a straight up move, that's where you can take a little more time. So I'm going to be watching this very closely because it's going to give us tremendous clues as to what's going on. So I wanted to show you this picture that says the financials have been, not all of them, but majority of them have really taking it on the chin. If you look at the KRE, which is a different thing altogether, that's the regionals, flat, nothing to see here. They are dead for now. But they will come back. But at the moment, they are just trying to rebuild uh, everything from confidence to, to technical strength. You can name it. That's what they need to rebuild. And until trading at 43 right now, around number 43, down 48 cents, until they start to actually not, they can't just hit 51 the, this is the S&P Regional Banking ETF. It really has to be trading between 51 and 55 at some point on a weekly basis, somewhere in that range. And that says, whew, we're okay. So I want you to go through that I don't usually get a chance to do. Um, I, I want to also show you something different. So it just came up with that Tesla. Did, did I show this yesterday? I had drawn in from days ago when it was up there I put in this left side right side price time match to this X which said that by the 21st it should hit 400 uh, 164 is trading at 164 right if you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market then rocket equities and options report is a newsletter you should try tommy o'brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you.
Tom's Daily Market Newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. Uh, we're back. I'm just trying to do this left side, right side price tie match. That's bar symmetry and yeah, the one minute chart. Just I like to show these techniques because they repeat over and over. It's just human nature and they keep repeating over and over. So we've got leg C. I, I put in the left side, right side price tie match. I should have put uh, the channel wave inside wedge target repellent zone uh, line. That's right there. Make it a green. All right, with time wise, we've already hit that. Price wise, we missed it by about 50 cents so far. The, the minute is <laughs> young. And look at this move from peak C in the 10 minute chart. Oh, there's so much to discuss. The whole thing about yesterday, I want you to do, but it doesn't matter. Let's just move on. I, I'm not very good at looking backwards. I really am a, a looking forward person. Whatever happened minutes ago, I'm just, I moved on. I remember when I did my live webinar. Uh, someone had emailed me and said, wow, I can't believe how quickly you took that tiny loss and you just moved on as if nothing had happened. You've got to do that because the chart couldn't care. The chart is moving to the right. You don't want to keep moving to the left from the chart. But sometimes you have to move to the left to do the analysis. So we'll do that right now because the question came in about uh, XLE. Let me just go there. XLE is the S&P financial, uh, sorry, select energy spider fund. And here we go. This is a leg EC. So what is the Chapman methodology? It's just the, the core concept is so simple. It's embarrassing because you just have to know the alphabet A, B, C, D. It can go to E, F, and G, but D is really the objective from the buy signal upgrade to a buy mode. What happens on the way? And that's really the simplicity of it. Look, we've just had that in the one-minute chart. Let me go there because this is live. So this went peak A. The 9P moving crossed over, peak B, this is the one minute E mini, peak C. And then here's my trend line. Where did it go? I must just move away my gray line because that can be deceiving sometimes. There it is. It went to leg D. What's the obligation to get you to D? What was the previous high? Peak D. There we are. And so I, I like to make things as simple now. It does get complicated. There's nothing that can be so simple that it just remains simple. There's a certain point where you've done the easy part, and then you have to do a little bit of work. So now what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to go back here and say, in the XLE, it's had a really good rally. 
there's a trend like I've drawn the rectangles, I've drawn in the, oh, I have to talk about this. Okay, so in the Chapman methodology, what do we do? We look for from the lowest identifiable low bar, always make sure this is the low bar that counts. The moment it makes a trough, that means there's a higher left side, a lower right side high than the left side, that makes a trough. And then you can start your count. Peak A, B, if, if, the, if any rally goes back underneath your starting point, you have to start all over again. It doesn't just keep getting counted. So what do we have? We have peak A, B, C, and at, at B, a break above it or somewhere in this area, you can get an upgrade through the technicals that goes from a buy signal to a buy mode. That's what you want because it says you should, you should get to a D. That's the obligation. So what happens is at D, other things can happen. What are the patterns we look at? We look at straight line up, straight line down, cup formation, arch formation, or a combination of one and three. One and, uh, one and three in this case is sharply down, and then it fails at a peak A or B and takes out that left side low. Look, here it is. You come sharply lower, you go peak A, peak B, arches over, takes out that left side low, and it can go much lower than that. Broke the 200 period moving average. That's the dreaded H. The reverse Y, the positive Y, um, the green one says that when you're going up, if you take out that left side high, you can go even higher. Well, it balances. It's a successful H pattern because it never took out that left side low. The technicals are, are expanding, and now it goes up to B, gaps up, fills a little bit of the gap, and then it goes in a cup formation. There it is, and it goes to C at a doji high. That C has very good technicals. But the price is the arbiter of the trend, and the price went under the 14-period moving average. The MACD went from very positive 85% 80, or so to 70% where it is now. The MACD is turning down. The 9-period moving average is still positive, and it says at this level, since you were under a previous peak C- minus that failed, you, you got to be prepared. This is not like a fresh buy signal to buy mode. And it's taken, oh, it has taken out one left side high over there. Okay, that's a good sign. So now you have to monitor it. And it says, now I have to get rid of this. And it says, look at your, your other time frames. So the weekly time frame says there's a very large buy, buy right here, support level. This is the propellant zone. And it keeps going in and it keeps on propelling back up into it. And there's your H pattern, the lowercase h. There's a sharp move down. There's your arch formation. And it took three bars, and it still didn't break above that. Oh, it finally did over there. The third bar went above the H low. That's good. It says it could rally, but it's going to stall at some a gap or a, a doji candle or a moving average, but it probably won't take out the left side high. It's going to be stuck in this range for a little longer. And if you look at the monthly chart, it's just stuck in a range between 94.71, November 22, the high, and the low that was made at 75.36, and it's stuck in the range. So that's my answer is XLE is stuck in a range right now, and it's just trying to rebuild strength to be able to move higher, and I suspect it'll take about six weeks or so, and then you might see the XLE moving higher. But it needs to hold 80. It's at 85 right now. Um, and if it does go to a D after using up so much energy, I think it might just stall at about 88 in the uh, 88 to 89 area as it stands. And if you look at ENPH, which is a question there, ENPH is N phase energy, energy um, company, energy and battery, made a peak D in the monthly, made a peak F in the weekly, and it had a really nice bounce off the low of 180. All the way to 200 in the 232 area. Now it's pulling back a little bit at peak C. The technicals are still strong enough to say it should attempt to go to a D, but that 233 is going to be really strong resistance at the 200 period moving average. And uh, the further away it pushes down from that is a problem, but it has had a really good rally over the last couple of days. Most importantly, 217 is going to be key support in the short term. But as a stock is trying to rebuild strength, I think it's in the area of rebuilding strength. But that doesn't mean to say that it couldn't wiggle around with a 15-point range, even from here. 
So it's and this is improving. The MACD is so close to turning up again in the weekly. Stochastic's improving. It's improving. And that, all I can say is I wouldn't, I wouldn't put a lot of money in it right now if you're starting or have started a position. But as a smallish starter position, if it's a fresh position, I have no problem with that. But you've got to maintain some kind of a stop. Next question came in. Uh, um, Amazon. So I don't know if it's a question, but I saw it mentioned in the den. Amazon, <clears throat> nice move up today, almost to the 200 period moving average of 107.29. It went to 106.73, a little gap, a leg E. Uh, but the, the weekly chart says Amazon is starting to, like we're looking at end phase, it's starting to rebuild a tremendous amount. It needs to rebuild that strength. The move up from the 80 level to the 100, just over 110, and then back again to the mid 80s, and now up to 105, just says, this is probably the range that it's in for the next, at least for foreseeable future, the next couple of weeks. And I'm gonna put it right here. I'll draw it in and we'll look at it over the weeks to see if it's there, between 109 and 93. I'll be back in a moment, Dow's up 80, uh, 60, S&P's up four. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. SMHs, that's the semiconductors. A number of people have asked me about them. Um, and the chapter wave, yes, it is a peak F in the daily chart uh, in the 260s. It dropped to the two, today's low is 246. Um, but look at the weekly chart. Yes, I mentioned earlier that I do not like a pattern that goes to a D or an E underneath the previous major high and then stalls. So this is done exactly that. I did the left side. I, I drew in the left side, right side price time match. I said, look, the low that was made in July 
at about 189, and the low that was made at 166.97 in October, the technicals were quite a lot better, and that it should start to rally. What it rallied very nicely, very choppy, but it did rally very nicely. And then the price symmetry between that low and the left side of 284.42 uh, uh, back in April of 2022, um, had a match and it failed way underneath it. It got stalled at the Gem Wave inside wedge target resistance line. But the 9 is still way over the 14. The MACD is still good. The stochastic is still at 84%. The on balance volume is very weak. And um, it just says to me that it's stalling and it was a leader. And therefore, that made me feel a little bit cautious about the overall market. But the, that's more the daily chart. The weekly chart considering what's going on is still holding pretty well. And the monthly chart has had a really nice move from the long-legged doji low that was made back in October. And and I, I kind of like what I'm seeing. It's a huge move up, and now April has been a consolidation month. But I'm not disagreeing. I'm saying that on a very short-term basis, the SMHs have, have actually today have gone confirmed the sell signal to sell mode upgrade. That's on the daily chart, but the weekly chart is still in the buy mode. So there's a conflict. So the shorter term is the reason why I'm talking about uh, why I've got just a little bit cautious here. But we have got I've, got, I've built up a list of things to buy, stocks and ETFs that I really like. I'm just waiting for the next very sharp pullback. Uh, it hasn't come yet. So uh, that was uh, another question that I had was, um, where did I, I wrote them all down? Yes, PG, Procter & Gamble, that's in the defensive area. Not defense like Raytheon, but defensive Procter & Gamble household products. So if I draw in a trend line right here in the monthly chart, look at this. From that high, a series of, of highs, I, I just love the way so many markets over the last year have been making uh, highs um, and then come back to those highs to the penny and then pull back or lows and then come like the dollar. They went to almost exactly within 20 cents of the previous low. So Procter & Gamble in the defensive area, that's XLP. XLP, here we go. This is the select. It's consumer staples area. See how it's broken the trend line? You see how this uh, monthly chart has, the monthly is still young. Anything can happen next week, but so far it's pushed above the downtrend line, and you can make it like this wedge formation or uh, pennant, inverse pennant formation. I'm not a big fan of these particular pennant uh, formations. It's going to break one way or the other. Rather look at the dreaded H. This is a successful H right now because it made a higher low. So this is a good sign. The MACD hasn't crossed positive. Stochastic is still weak, but the price is doing nicely. The nine period moving even on the – look at this. The nine period moving – Oh, I don't believe it. Let me go to this chart right here. Uh, this is the, these are the techniques that I'm going to show you when I finally do my, my web. I haven't done a webinar for subscribers in a long time because I've been for, uh, or, uh, for the year more than uh, going into last year. I've been doing this huge uh, every weekend. I do like a webinar, a whole hour, going through all these different things. Well, look at the why have I got this here. Oh, XLP. Is that what I was looking at, XLP? Wait a minute. Let me just go back to where I was. Yes, XLP. So have a look at this. XLP, this is now, I'm just showing you the, the daily chart, but I don't want that. I want the monthly chart. So I'm going to go right here. Some things have switched around. That's okay. Monthly chart. Now look at this. You see this one moment right there from the low that was made when it crossed positive in November of 2000. What a technique this is. I just wish I could use it more because you need so much patience to do it and you've got to remember to look. But Procter & Gamble, when it crossed positive right there, November of, November of 2009, in the 26s, it ran green all the way to that one moment, one bar where it didn't, so that it went, oh gosh, I forgot already what it was. Did I say 20 something? Right there. I said 26, right. So it goes from 26, and then you get taken out one month. In this particular instance, I usually say you've got to wait at least two bars, because one month, one bar you can switch, but it doesn't matter. Let's say you're taking out 
at, at, at the high, uh, at the low of 49. And then you go back in two bars later at the high of 56. So you're out, you, you, you're two bars, two points you lost. You'd still be green. So except for one bar, one month, from 2009 to today, uh, the 17th of April, 2023, Procter & Gamble is still green. Isn't that amazing? Who has patience to do that? You've got to have patience. Um, anyway, so what we're looking at here is uh, within the context of what I'm talking about, it says that the XLP had a big digestive phase, but for some reason it's back in vogue, and that has to do with um, looking at all the different agriculture. Look, the DBA, which is the Agricultural Fund, um, is had made a peak E, at 21, around about 21.30, and now it's down at 20.91. That's a leg C in the weekly chart after getting out of the big rectangle. So now we've got to be careful. That does it break 20 point? This midpoint here would be about 20.10. Does it break 20.10? And that's all over. It goes down to the bottom of 19. Or is it holding? But that's part of the grains that have been, the DB Agricultural Fund has the grains. And the grains have had a really big, overall, the grains have had a big move. Actually, it was more sugar than anything else. But that's okay, because that tells you what's happening. And that's the effect in the XLP, where Procter & Gamble is able to raise prices. That's really what I'm saying. So, okay, I want you to do that. Now I need to go back to where, normally where I would start. Uh, UNH Banking. Yes, I'm just checking all the things I wrote down here that I wanted to do. I've done quite a few of them today. Oh, oh, Procter & Gamble, I wanted to show you something. This is for those of you who do Chapman Wave Analysis. Look at that. From the 122.18, we've just seen this in the E-mini. Uh, this is why I want to, I actually wrote this down before the E-mini even existed this morning with that pattern because it was early in the morning. It was uh, before 9 o'clock. So the E-mini hadn't even gotten to that phase. No, it was not. It was 8.30. So I did this and I showed... Uh, I, I, look, a peak C pulls back really sharply. But here's your starting point. This is your trigger for the buy signal right there at 122.18. So you've got to count every peak in the, and, and trough in the Chapman wave. So this is gray A. That's gray B. But the moment you break above that, it has to pick up D because this is your major alphabet, A, B, C, D. And now you've gotten to leg D. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Didn't we just see that? Peak A, peak B, peak C goes to a C minus because it took out the left side low. Peak A, peak B, peak C, C minus because it took out the left side low. If these didn't take out their left side low, when it rallied back after that big fall from peak C, that would have been a D. I wanted to show you that, how it works. Now, this is a brand new A right here. This thing fails within the rectangle. This is a I'll be back in a moment. Belgian Chapman. Dow's up 22. S&P's down a dollar. Uh, we're looking at a, just a, a trading range day. You today. might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at tfnn.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. 
These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. And try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hello, so let me just show you this. Yeah, this is this doesn't have to be correct or anything. I'm just saying this is what I do. Remember, we had that low there, right there, that 4130, uh, what was it, 30, uh, right there, 413775 level. Well, it went to peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D. It did the left side, right side, price time match, held the 9 EMA, and look how long it took. This is what I'm looking at the, in the Dow. That's the reason why we are short via the S&P. I'd, I'd like to short the Dow, but we're using that. We still have a core long position from way down in the October low as well as others. So now what we're looking at is, you see that 9, how strong it was, and the MACD was good and the stochastic. Look how quickly the MACD went negative, stochastic went negative. But that 9 period moving average said that you had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 bars before it broke down. Okay, let me go back to the Dow and show you why I'm looking at this. And I'm saying it's time that we're looking at rather than price. They will, they could be priced, but first you have to think time. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. This is the six session since you made your leg D, 34,082 in the Dow. The MACD is still really strong. Stochastic is turning down, but it's still strong. But now the nine period moving average, sorry, the uh, stochastic has dropped from the um, 89, 90 area to 84% and the on balance volume is turning down. And you can see the gray line, the uh, relative strength index is turning down. So I'd be a little careful now because I'm looking at this and I'm saying, it's gonna be a process. And that's what I said to subscribers to my opening call. We want you to take profits. We've taken profits, really nice profits. And now what we were looking at is, We've got a short, I could have used an option, that would probably be better, but if you're looking at April options, we're done with that. So I have to look at May, and I, I looked at the premium, it was still a little high, uh, maybe today to shrink going from Friday into Monday, if Monday actually opens up a little bit, whatever we do today at the end of the day, you can see the premium, and then maybe we can look at something on the short side, but or via the uh, put um, option. But this is what I'm looking at. Why I'm saying it takes time because it's been so strong. I always think of years ago when I would have one of those little accidents on my little motor, motorbike. And as, it, as the bike was hitting the ground, I, it depends on how fast I was going as it was hitting the ground. I would start adding up all the things I had to replace. Oh, the rear view mirror that I, I, I quickly do a cost analysis and oh the the front the left side fork of the of the suspension whatever it is um, oh the twist the handle the twist bar the rubber's got to be replaced and all that stuff but it depends on the momentum and you have so much momentum to the upside yeah you're not going to turn around unless there's some really sharp bad news that takes it and right now on the fifth session five one two three four five yeah on the fifth session this is where I'm expecting that you're going to see either the break to the downside, 
So I'd say be careful. Now let me go back to the chart we were looking at. I did this really quickly. This is what I like to do all day. So this is your, uh, I, I put, I, I did this to that level. Normally I would go to the trough of the cup. I, I just did this so quickly I didn't have time to even think. This is what I would normally do right here. And I do the right side. It should come in. Okay, right. What am I doing? I'm changing color. Changing color to uh, red. That's what I would do. There are. I would go to that trough right there. And look what it did. It did it to the exact bar. I just, I, I was doing, I'm sorry, I did it so quickly. I should have done that more patiently. And that's where the X is. Look at that. So now there's some news out there. Maybe there's news. I don't know what it is, but there's a cell program coming in. We're down 92 in the and the Dow down 15 in the S and P, so that's the way I look at it. Um, and uh, at this particular point, you're going to try to find some support right back on the left side, 4137 area. So we can somewhere between 4135, 34. You should try to find a bounce, and that becomes a single leg A up. Let me expand that. I want you this today. I didn't know what would happen. Of course, it's impossible to know. But I want you today to be an educational thing because I want you to. To look at the way I'm I'm planning and I'm trying to teach when I do my next webinar for subscribers um, and I'll be talking about these things look here's your single leg a failure this is the Eiffel Tower straight up straight down and now we're testing the low and that makes it a really important low now it's really important I need to go through everything that I didn't do before so let me just do this again down I'll give you numbers Dow has to hold 33,500 on a closing basis in the next few days, if it takes that out, we've begun the consolidation that I'm expecting. The reason why we took big profits in and in, in our different long position on the Dow, and now we've shorted via the S&P because I think that's a tad weak. And listen, the Dow's down 0.23, S&P's down 0.32. Okay, that's the way I've been looking at it. If we come down, next thing I want to go to is the S&P. Where are the well, I think I did that before, but I'll do it again. S&P. 4,088, 84, somewhere around there. That to me is going to be really key. We break that. I think the nine period starts to move down, and then we, we get the digestive phase with a little double top here on the weekly chart. QQQ down 1.50 at 3.14. I think 3.10. I would say 309. A close under 309 says you're on your way down. It can last a little bit longer. The IWM, uh, that's going to be at 176 right now. Anywhere around 173. It doesn't have to be on a closing base. It just has to be 173. It says, uh-oh, not a good chart at all. Gold. Now I can do gold and silver. So gold, I don't think this is bad. 30 points down. But what is bad is that the... Um, Nine period moving average is within probably a day of crossing negative. The MACD is already turned down sharply. The um, uh, on balance volume is down. The relative, uh, the relative strength is turned down. The stochastic is at 44%. And that's just saying the daily chart has made a potential. Uh, let me just draw this in here. I like it to be exact, and it's not exact, so I'm just saying this is something I was looking at. But it did have Chapman Wave inside uh, track. It got out of the, the repellent zone for a moment, and now it's back in the repellent zone. And that just makes this whole area of 1960 to 1950 in the gold really important to hold. What's interesting is the GDX is making a slow. You see this? The nine period moving average was fabulous. Look how long it's taken this. And it still hasn't crossed negative, but it is the first day that the nine period is the price is under the 14 period exponential moving average. MACD is already down. Stochastic's way down at 52%. On balance volume is good. And um, yeah, so the MACD is just saying uh, you've got to be a little careful here. Uh, and that is an F slash B. It could turn into an F in the weekly chart, but so far the technicals are very good. So I go one step at a time. I say GDX, watch 32.10. Uh, let's just make it 32. A close under 32 says it's going to be a longer timeout, but that's where I'd be looking. Silver is, has been a much nicer chart, um, and it held very nicely, but it's starting to pull back from the peak F top at 25.09. Sorry, 20, sorry 26.23. 26.23. 
I looked at the wrong thing. 26.23, a little dreaded H pattern forming here. And here again, F slash A. I don't think this looks like an A. It looks more like an F, which could go to a G. But I'm just saying right here. And it did sneak out of that trend line in the monthly chart, but the monthly is still young. But it did. That's a good sign. So I would just say silver, uh, continuous contract, under 24, under 23.90. There's longer time out than usual. I'll be back in a moment, guys, on 78. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call Newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. I was just about to wrap it up. So FXI, just a quick question. I uh, know a statement that it had puts on it. Uh, GT, congratulations, working very well. FXI is down to 46 and 28.36. Uh, there's a potential dreaded H in that weekly chart, so just be a little careful. And you said NIO, yeah, shorts, uh, it puts on that as well. That's great. It had a little Gartley in the week, a big Gartley in the week, and a uh, weekly chart. It tried to rally, stopped at the 14 period moving average. That's why I always say you can put these things together. If you have a good technique, it should correspond extremely well with anybody else's really good technique. So, with that said, let me just do a couple of things here. I, I forgot all again, I did this and I forgot. I put this X in here for Tesla, and it's come right down to the 163 in the price time match. It did it a day early, but it says to me, watch this arch formation in the weekly chart. All right, I'm going to wrap it up. If by the end of the day, now we're down 71, and that's the reason why I'm saying just it's a moment of caution right here. If within the context of the markets, if you're looking at um, what, you, what could happen 
after 130 today, between 130 and 210. If the Dow is actually has come back to just a minus 35, it says that this is nine is so strong above the 40, it's going to take a while for everything to break down. If, in fact, we've gone from minus 75 now to more than 170 and the volatility index at 17.43 actually goes towards 18, we'll see a lousy close. So those are the things to look for uh, within the context of uh, what was it? The only other thing I forgot about. Oh, I didn't do uh, Bitcoin. I will do Bitcoin on Monday. I've sort of stepped away now. I've made a peak F doji candle. High and I think it's going to be pulling back. It missed the line, left side, right side price time edge in the weekly by a little bit, but it's had a spectacular gain. Could have a little digestive phase at this particular point. Have a wonderful rest of the day, rest of the weekend. Check out my opening call, and uh, I will see you on Monday. Stay tuned for Steve and all the great programs coming up. <laughs>